Okay, it's good. Hey, good evening, Chris Ram. How are you doing? Okay, good evening, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> How is Jamaica? How are things? Fantastic. Awesome. Hey, Jerry. Good evening. <coughs> um, want to wish you a wonderful evening. That's good. That's awesome. Now, Mike, good evening. Uh, good evening, good evening, Jerry. Awesome. Stand by there. Stand by. I want to wish you a wonderful uh, evening, wonderful afternoon. Ah, <clears throat> Chris Ramy said employment at four percent, and with the summer coming, it'll probably go down. Mm. Interesting, interesting topic. Good evening. I like this music as well. This is my uh, favorite tune which I play. It's called Passion Fruit by Drake. And <clears throat> YouTube hasn't said anything. So we capitalize on that as much as possible. Since YouTube is not having a problem with that. Or Facebook. Well, you know, tonight I, I wanna I wanna talk about um, you know as as uh, the the topic is is there displacement of jobs by technology or is it simply realignment you know <clears throat> i've got a young um, businessman enthusiast he says he's not young but i met him just recently and uh i like bringing new players not the same old same old new persons on the level as much as possible but but before, you know, before I actually bring in Jerry, you know, there, there's a topic which I've been which I've been talking about a while now, and uh, <coughs> ah, my voice. That topic is is about the whole issue regarding um, the the whole knife crime and the whole um, issue regarding that in the black community, um, London. Uh, that is something which is still happening. We haven't got rid of it. You may not have seen anything, but it's still happening out there. And, uh, and tomorrow night, I'm hoping to have, as my guest, Sandra Glenn um, from Luton. And I'm hoping to try to see if I can get her on for a couple of minutes. Uh, Carol, I'm going to see if I can actually get you on. Let me see. Carol Glenn. Carol. Okay, Carol, I'm sending you. Uh, ah, fantastic. There you are. Hey. Awesome. Carol. <laughs> can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Yes. Ah, you can. Awesome. Well, Carol, you, you started my wonderful um, Wednesday evening. <laughs> and and because, because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm having Carol, uh, sorry, Sandra Glenn, Sandra Glenn tomorrow night. There's, there's so many names which is in my head. You know, I've got uh, Jerry, Jerry Matthews is my next guest. I was calling him Jerry Garvey. Jerry Garvey was the former chair for the African Caribbean Lawyers Association. And because... My next guest, which is Jerry Matthews, is a lawyer as well. So I got it mixed up, but he, he apologized to me. And uh, 
for me, mixing them up. I've got a judge today was calling me Miss Sidiel um, and sending emails saying Miss Sidiel uh, Sanjo that I had to instruct my counsel and said, just discreetly say to the judge that I'm Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sidiel and not, and not Miss Sidiel. Um, but Sanjo, listen, um, tomorrow night I want to get you on onto the, the show and um, and it's about the whole topic which you have been talking about regarding knife crime and the whole issue within the black community. But I want to yeah. get you on, Carol, uh, Sandra, because there's also Luton. Luton, tell yeah. us about Luton. But first of all, tell us what you are uh, what you're about, Sandra. First of all, well, uh, I'm, I'm about helping my community. I'm born yes. in Luton in 1959, many years ago. I've been in other parts of the world, and I've worked even in America. But I've come back here in the last 15 years to dedicate my the remainder of my time to supporting where I'm from. It's very much an American ethos that you, if, if you all leave a place, it will never change. So I decided to follow the Americans and the people that I've learned a lot from in New York City and Brooklyn when I lived there and to actually return to my community in my neighborhood and, and give something back. So yeah. my work today, is about creating social enterprises. It's about helping with community solutions for social and criminal justice. It's about people with all sorts of issues, including for many years now, I've been dealing with immigration queries when people were stuck in other countries or trying to go to a funeral from the Caribbean um, descent. Our yes. people couldn't because they didn't have papers to travel with and I'd often help them get a letter from the um, the home office permitting them to leave the country and come back. Who knew that was kind of like a precursor to some of the current issues we're having? Especially with the Windrush factor and everything like that, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but more, speci but more specifically, um, Sanjo, you, you went to a meeting tonight and we're going to talk about that tomorrow night. And ladies and gentlemen, Sanjo Glenn is coming on tomorrow night, but... Uh, this moment is really just I'm a little uh, preview of tomorrow. But what happened today in a quick nutshell, the meeting that you had to do well, with the, the police? Bedfish, our local police force, Bedfordshire Police, um, and the local council had an, a knife crime community discussion. And they put it out like 48 hours ago, but they wanted to bring us together to sit in one room and discuss the issues as a collective force. And you know what? 200 people turned up. 200 yes. people the communities uh, because they are concerned and we, tonight we had another stabbing in Luton um, oh, this is going to the meeting and so it just shows that there's a there's still problems going on out there what when when London sneezes Luton catches a cold and wow. now they're please told us tonight that when Luton sneezes Bedfordshire Bedford itself Bedford Town Centre catches a cold so Bedfordshire is 600,000 citizens who now need to get to grips with the knife crime epidemic. Wow, wow. And and so therefore, it's not just a London thing. Normally, things are more focused on London, isn't it? But actually, yeah. it's... it's yeah. Well, we inherited some of London's uh, displaced families when they had the call out to councils across the UK to take some of the London council tenants. Our council signed up for that. So we had over the last dec decade or so, quite a lot of people from Brent and other council areas. They moved into Luton. Sometimes the young people were 10 and they were friends. And now they're living in different postcode areas because they were separated into different homes and stuff. And they've now become sworn enemies. And so you yeah. have this problem. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of... The, the knife crime issues are not one single strand. They're multifaceted. There are lots and lots of issues. And that some of them are complex and they need to be unraveled. I believe that the impact won't be on the generation that's causing the problems now. It will be on the younger brothers and sisters. Right. That, that's, that's very interesting. And just to, just to wrap up, um, Sanjo, um, we're also going to talk quickly about the, the generation that was here before and how the, the Black community was very, what should I say, more progressive. Or would, mm -hmm. is that a right word of saying, Sanjo? More progressive? Is they that were, correct? I don't know about, pro they made progress because they were 
they were more entrenched in challenges still. They were challenging for equality. They were fighting for to be heard. They were more joined up in fighting as a collective because I remember my parents going to the, the West Indian Association. When I grew up, we could see a panel of elders in Luton. We don't see that anymore. When I grew up, if I did something in the street, everybody knew before I got home because the, the grapevine was so hot. But the, the black community and the white would say, your parents they had a phone call before you even got into to the front. There was no mobile phones, you remember? It was pure landline. But somehow when you walked in, your mum would say, what were you doing down the road doing so-and-so? So you knew that you had a neighbourhood looking out for you. And it wasn't just black. It was the whole neighbourhood looking out for you. And basically, yeah, you, you kind of behaved yourself because you knew you couldn't get away with it. Yeah, you try yeah. telling a child somebody else's child off in the street and see what you get. So, 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 right. So therefore, that's also a part of the solution as well, isn't it? Uh, bringing mm -hmm. back some of those old time traditions may be the solution, part of the solution regarding yeah. the complex I, nature. Yes, but also got to get the parents to support the fact that you want to protect their child. Uh, but yeah. it's not about hearing another adult talking to the child because yes. it's not all about abuse. If you see a child about to do something wrong and you try to correct it, you are in the wrong nowadays. Taking away the chance for people in the community to be able to help support your child means that your child had accountability. That's being removed from society today in the UK. Fantastic. Well, Sandra, thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you remember, after the state of the, the knife crime recently, I said that I was going to try to get on different persons who are involved in the community on the ground level, actually making waves, and um, not just for London. And there were about 25. And when I mentioned 25 to Sandra, Sandra said they're silver and there are tons more. Isn't that Sandra? <laughs> so, so this is just a start of the thing. So tomorrow night, uh, Sandra will join me at 10 o'clock, where we'll be going a bit deeper into this whole issue regarding um, the progressive, youthful development of young black men through some of the Actions and, 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 and women, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it, Sandra? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we only talk about the men, isn't it? The boys. No, 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 it's the, girls. the girls are in there too. Right, right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Sandra, listen. So, uh, see you tomorrow night. Thank you for joining and um, and all the best. And um, ladies and gentlemen, Sandra was just passing through. Somebody said, great talk. Well, you haven't seen anything else. That was just five minutes. <laughs> people that are uh, tuning in, I see that they know me. Please tune in tomorrow at 10 o'clock, guys, and join in the dialogue tomorrow. I'd love to see you. First time is to the Silborn Seidel show. Silborn is a long-term, uh, long-time um, politician, community activist, and he's also a presenter of his own show, and he talks about lots of topical issues that we need to get to grips with. So please, come back tomorrow, same time, and you'll hear me for, what, an hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long am I on tomorrow? Sorry. I'm sorry? So how long will I be on tomorrow? Uh, well, we're, we're keeping within an hour. You know, it could be less or so. You know, because persons, we'll be asking persons to interact as much as possible. So uh, I think 10 o'clock is, uh, an hour normally is a good time. Uh, because you know what, you know what, Sanjo, why I say give that time? Because uh, we normally get these two minutes, five minutes on the mainstream. And I said, well, I'm going to give an opportunity for persons to share. And it is for us to share the video so people can actually hear some of the things what we are doing. Because the mainstream yeah. will normally only call on persons when something gone bad. And they give them five minutes or so. We're jockeying for it. But I said, I want to give over my time and use this platform. As you know, facilities for Better Jamaica and the different platforms I have. It is for the community as well. So, yes, yeah. as long as we can. Sandra. <laughs> From Wellingborough, Amina. Thank you, Michelle from Atlanta. Please do join in tomorrow. It's nice to have you. Yay! Peace out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra. Bye bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was Sandra Glenn, and tomorrow night she'll be joining um, on the, the late one with myself. And uh, and what is what is what is very interesting? Let me just go back to this. I need to set set this, set the stage again. Um, I'm going to be having my good man, um, which is Mr. Jerry Matthews. Jerry, are you around? Let me see if you're around. 
Let me see something here. Let me see if I can find Jerry. Yes. Uh, one, two. Okay, good, good. Well, Jerry, listen, um, I want you to to um to come back, Jerry. Uh yep, yeah, that's where you are. And and Jerry, if you can actually Jerry, I don't know what I'm Jerry. Jerry, what I want you to do, Jerry, I want you to log out and log back in and see if you see that icon to invite yourself into into the show. Um, there's a button that will show that because somehow I'm not seeing that button. And it's very interesting that you, it's very important that you actually log back in so we can actually see you. But in regards to the main news, otherwise, I mean, I always like to touch on something which is which is happening is that uh, we, we understand that the, the, the wedding of the year, which is going to happen on Saturday, I don't know if many people are interested in the wedding of the year with Meghan and Prince Harry. Um, and of course, the big news is about whether the father can attend or not. Um, unfortunately, the father is not well. I believe he's going to be having a heart surgery. And as a result of that, yeah, he, he won't be able to, to attend. Uh, so maybe Prince Charles or somebody um, will, will, be, will be taking him taking her down the aisle or so. Um, Jerry, I can't seem to get you on, Jerry. Request. Okay. So, so Jerry, what I want you to do, Jerry, I want you to sort of look, um, look for a, uh, uh, look for a, a button or so, something that says "invite you on into into the show." Um, that that would be great. The other thing, also in the news as well, is um, there's this thing about uh, the the meeting between Kim Jong-un and uh, President Trump is getting a sort of stalemate and maybe it might, might not happen or so. So that is that is something there. I mean, you know, you know, we, we still have the issue regarding Israel and the Palestinian and at the Gaza. So many things are happening there as well. A big lots of discussions about the end time, lots of discussions going on about that. But that is um that is something else which is out there in the news. But one of the things um, that many people talk about a lot is the whole thing about automation, right? Automation and jobs, 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 whereby it seems like the jobs is not how it was as it was before. Playing for survival, how are you? You see, a report predicts that. A new report predicts that by 2030, as many as 800 million jobs could be lost worldwide to automation. The study compiled by the McKenzie Global Institute says that advances in AL and robots, robotics um, will have a drastic effect. Let me see something. Um, Jerry Matthews, add viewers into your broadcast. Uh, let me see if I can find Jerry. So I'm just trying to find somebody here. Uh, uh, yeah, um, say that advances in algo box will have a drastic effect on everyday working lives comparable to the shift away from agricultural societies during the Industrial Revolution in the US alone, between 39 and 73 million jobs stand to be automated, making up around a third of the total workforce. I need to get Jerry Matthews on, but I'm not going to do this alone. And, uh, and somehow I'm not seeming to, to get Jerry. Who can I get? Um, who is going to be in the kitty today? Um, there we are. There. I think I got him. There you are. You are smart. Hey! <laughs> Good work to the end. <laughs> Jerry, listen. 
I was getting hot flushes a while ago because I said, I'm not going to do this because you're the man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or or so I was going to call back, I was going to call back, Carol, uh, San, I was going to call back Sandra and said, come back and deliver me. <laughs> How are yeah, you? Maybe I should, just, I should let it go a little bit longer to make you sweat a, sweat a bit. <laughs> well, no, well, ladies and gentlemen, this, this is my huh? first time using this. So this is my first time using this. I know I'm supposed to be the younger one, but uh, yeah, definitely had some technical difficulties um, <laughs> getting online. I think I paused it and then tried to put it back on again. And, and, and uh, yeah, anyway, we're, we're here. Well, well, I, Thanks for inviting well, me on your show. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think you're a master at this now, Jerry. The little training that we had earlier today, you're now a master at, at Facebook Live, you know? Um, kudos to yourself. <laughs> well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, I, I met Jerry um, just a week and a half ago at a, at a baby naming of a friend, um, and and uh, we we just got talking. And one of the things I love um, is meeting new people and actually tapping into um, new persons and the network. I call it networking with the persons who have net worth. Is that correct? <laughs> Networking with the persons who have networked. <laughs> um, a lawyer by training, but uh, but but Jerry, listen. Um, the the topic which I put out there tonight, as you can see, because we discussed this earlier, was about is there a displacement of jobs by technology, or is it simply a realignment or so? And I I, I wrote I, I I did a little research before I I, I came on to this program, and it was. The news report that predicts that by 2030, as many as 800 million jobs could be lost worldwide to automation. And the study compiled by the McKinsey Global Institute say the advances in AL and Robux, robotics will have a drastic effect on everyday working lives, you know, compared to the shift away from agricultural societies during the Industrial Revolution. And exactly. in 39 and 73 million jobs stand to be automated making up around a third of the total workforce. What's your thoughts on this? Are jobs the end or the end of jobs now? <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I, I don't really know much, but I, I'll uh, try and share the, 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 the thoughts I have. Actually, I see there's a guy watching, Simon Michel, um, who I went to university with. That he, uh, he's probably very knowledgeable about this because he worked at some of the consulting firms. Um, yes. But my thoughts on this is essentially that uh, the by virtue of essentially like technology and evolution, these jobs are going to A, go away, and then B, in a sense, come back in that there'll be yeah. different jobs out there, right? So you were talking about the agricultural times, there was nothing such as like a digital media strategist back then, right? But now, if you look at most companies, they have people in there working on XYZ, internet this, and um, you know all the various, even people talking about working on AI, all these different things right now. Um, so yeah, jobs, they're they are just gonna change. The only problem is that as the jobs are changing and going away, the current ones are going away so quickly, will people be able to adapt quickly enough to retrain themselves into going into the other jobs that, that they you know that are that are being advertised. So, for instance, um, if you look at some of the investment banking fields or you know legal fields, a whole heap of jobs in the kind of you know, the middle office are being wiped out. Yes, whereas, and are not being advertised for. Whereas, if you look on the tech side, a whole heap of jobs are being advertised in the programming um, side of things. But how quickly can middle office um, legal person? become fluent in some tech language? That is a question. Um, mm. So that, I mean, that's how I see things. I mean, one of the things was uh, somebody just said a while ago that there was a promise one time of the paperless office followed by paperless industries. And, um, and as a result of that, as that worked, because what you're having now is that you got that struggle whereby it seems like it is more work to a certain extent than less. I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily true because I see people being able to do a lot more 
um, just because the technology is making, bringing in the leverage, allowing people to do a lot more. So in all instances or a lot of instances, people in jobs, their employers yes. are going to try and maximize the output they can get from them. So if maybe 20 years ago, a person was doing, you know, doing only two things, um, and that's taking the whole day, right? If you're thinking about, you know, sending a letter to somebody or, or typing something up, whereas now because of technology, that person can do 10 things. So yes. in a sense, this, that, that person's productivity is now higher, but that person was still, the, the employers are gonna try to max out that, that productivity from that person, whatever it is, right? Um, so it's not necessarily people might be working less, people might be working more, just doing maybe more things. Um, Mm. But at the end of the day, I guess if you're exchanging your time um, for money, in a sense, then no matter how much, how productive you are, um, you're still going to be billing at the same kind of hour rate, right? So yes. um, I think which is part of the problem, actually, because people are still in the whole employment sector exchanging time for money. And that's kind of operating on a linear basis. Um, well, I don't know if linear is the right word. But if you look at what the internet can do or computers can do, the massive world is people changing, it's people taking advantage of the change in paradigms and dynamics, right? So if you look yeah. at the richest people, it's all tech-based and they're, they're no longer exchanging one-to-one. -one. Or like how we're doing now, we're not exchanging one-to-one, -one, we're exchanging one-to-five or one-to-ten or one-to-twenty. So yeah. it's reprogramming our mindsets that, you know, the world has changed, so we've got to change it. Otherwise, we're gone. That's how it's like. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome. Who's just coming on now? I've got my um, Mr. Jerry Matthews. Well, we're talking about is there a displacement of jobs by technology or is it simply realignment? Um, as well, I'd like you to share this video as well. Just press share and invite someone on. Um, there's there's, an, there's another point. What what is AI? I mean, it's called these these different industries now because something is saying that technology, which is displacing jobs, will be saved by technology as well. What is AI? What is AI? Well, I am again very much a novice on this, but AI is essentially artificial intelligence. So yes. it's, we're gonna have, it's, so we're gonna have we're gonna have UFOs coming down. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they maybe they're there, maybe they're already here, who knows? Um, but that is um programming computers to perform a series of functions um using or uh, based on a data set which you've given them. So um that is what they're able to do. So tasks which humans would so would do. So for instance, if you look at AI and chess, right, the human brain can comp can computate X amount of moves or X amount of potential probabilities of moves in advance. So if you take a computer and train it that to say, okay, right, these are the series of moves you can do. Um, and this is a series of moves the other person can do. So based on X, Y, Z, and based on these probabilities, if you want to achieve a certain result, calculate and put all the calculations together to see what action would yield the best result. So that's just one example. So how yeah. fast can we think? Maybe we're, we're, we, you know, we're not chess grandmasters, right? So we don't, um, we're not able to process these things quite fast. Whereas a computer can do it, if you program it, put the right data set, they can do this in a nanosecond. So apply that same thinking to the driving space. So a lot of drivers are gonna be out of jobs. Like a lot of um, yeah. maybe Uber drivers, who are part of the, uh, what's, what's the word they use now? Um, the gig economy, right? Which is, is what they yeah. call it. Um, Uber drivers, delivery drivers, um, even haulage drivers, right? A lot of these guys, their tasks c can be automated by, as in can be replaced by AI. Because at the end of the day, you give the AI the data set and say, if X, do Y, you know? That's yes. it. So, if and, you see and, red light, and with these, stop. and with these, and with these vehicles which are now automated as well, that is that is the start of that whole process, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, I mean, it's it's already it's, it's started. It's just not widespread yet. You know, that's mm -hmm. 
that's the only but then again but, but, but then again um someone said here automation is is uh will cause a loss of jobs look at the self-service stations in supermarket <clears throat> you're also yeah. in recruitment what what yeah. what do you say to someone who comes in with um skills set which will be when you look at it will be defunct i mean is it that they go to a process of retraining or die <laughs> yeah as as i don't know as blunt as it sounds i think that's necessary that that is the case it's um for lack of a better phrase it's evolve or die right so the world is changing the world has changed if the market no longer wants to buy what you have or what you're selling you have to mm -hmm. sell something else um yeah. because the same <clears throat> su supply and demand equations that are everywhere else will still factor in <laughs> so if so, i'm speaking to somebody and they're looking for a job that unfortunately it happens a lot with older people so if you speak to a guy who's been an, an md or at a you know at a bank for so long um there used to be 10 of him now they're only three or four people in the position and this guy is he's got a family he's got kids uh wife he's getting paid you know maybe hundreds of thousand dollars but they don't need him anymore because there are younger guys who can do the job who know the technology is better yes. <laughs> and now this guy he, he has to retrain you know because what he knows what he's spent all his time learning and perfecting is just no longer really wanted by the market so it's like if you're an expert in making floppy disk drives, but people just put in things in the cloud, it's, it's not the people's fault. It's not your fault. It's just the way it is, right? So then you just have to adapt mm. or, or, yeah. So, 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 there, so therefore, as, as someone just said a while ago, one of the key aspects is, is retraining. But is it, is it, it may sound it may sound daunting, um, Jerry, to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. People might say this is doomsday, but at the same time, oh. some other persons, some other persons are seeing this is an exciting time. What is the excitement um, aspect towards all this? Because as I as as it said earlier, before you before you comment, um, in this article uh, by Brian Heater, he said technology is killing jobs, and only technology can save jobs. Or save them at the same time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one way you can look at it is on the retraining aspect, right? Okay, maybe tech might be wiping out some jobs, but again, tech makes it a lot easier to learn, right? Because if you just Google, you can learn anything by searching to Google. You know, you, yeah. could, you could look at YouTube. There are hundreds of videos on YouTube which are telling you how to do X, Y, Z. There's a, there are sites like uh, Udemy or there are even all Harvard and all these other kind of big institutions are, are um, putting a lot of their, their, their content online. So yeah. whereas you would have to go to a school and sit there for, you know, four years paying a hundred thousand dollars, you know, to retrain yourself to do something, you can maybe pay $5,000, or $10,000 and study in your own time and be retrained. Cause yeah, at the end of the day, it's all data input, right? Or just down, it's like the Matrix, you know, in the Matrix where they put the thing where Neo learns, yeah, how to yeah. Fight yeah, so that's essentially what it is. But unfortunately, that kind of technology is not here yet. But people are actually working on it, um, uh, as opposed to just plugging it in, it might take some people two months or three months to, well, it, well, it, to learn. Well, well, it's int well, it's interesting that you mentioned about um, people just going on to YouTube and downloading that information by watching someone instead of going through some of the technical things but they can actually watch it because i'm actually learning a lot by youtube you know getting yeah. cameras yeah. learning how to do camera and and i mean learn, i'm even learning editing now instead of sometimes waiting for editors to do my stuff i'm actually sitting there sometime late in the night watching these yeah. guys for these three minutes thing as they break it down you know in in some yeah. real practical terms <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what it is. Like this guy, I was, just, I, was I think it's a book about it. Um, he pretty much summed it up. He said, "We're all in the information business, um, because that's like the things you're doing, the things you know how to do, are based on the information that's in your head, right? Mm. That's it. 
is based on the software you're operating. If you were to look at us as like, you know, computers in a way, all the things I'm doing is based on the software I'm operating in here, right? Yeah. And it's like downloading the data in there. That's all it is. And then whatever is in there is what you can you know, put in or put out rather. Um, so yeah, a lot of jobs are going away, but you see, I, I'm, 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 I'm smiling. I'm smiling because I look forward to the day when you're in a courtroom and <laughs> your client, your, your, your instructing counsel is actually a robot, a iRobot, a, a, a iRobot or something like that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Articulating. Unfortunately, I think, yeah, because I, I kind of left the, the legal road a while back. So, yeah, I wouldn't have to deal with that. But you, you may have to deal with that. And, and my money's on the robot. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that, that, that's interesting. So, so what, what, what would we say then is uh, are some of the, the ways that persons can actually bridge this gap? Now, someone, is, as I said, will be, will, will be thinking to themselves, my God, I need to actually get sorted, man. I'm in my 40s and my 50s. And, um, and the more Ish. I go, I realize these, these young, vibrant people are coming in. These millennials are just taking over. What do I do? Oh, well, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily just age, because even there are some millennials, as you so put it, who are still stuck in certain just um, old ways of doing things and still doing things that way. So if we look, Facebook Live, for instance, it's been around for a while. You know, you're an older guy than me. This is the first time I'm using Facebook Live, right? Come on, so, I'm older than you. I thought I was, I thought I was older. <laughs> But that's just my point. So it's not necessarily yeah. just about age. Um, it's just a case of like uh, the ability to kind of, uh, you know, embrace the new. But then there's a switch mm -hmm. cost, which is painful often for people to, to do. It's why they don't, they don't do it because you've, you're so used to one thing one way and it's a nice, comfortable place to be in. Mm -hmm. and then, <laughs> And then having to like switch again. So yeah, the 40, 50 year old guy, there's not much choice in the matter. Yes. It's like, if the world has changed, you have to change with it or be yes. left behind. That's it. Well, that, that's powerful. Well, 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 in that, in that report, which I, I referred to earlier by um, James Vincent, uh, and this was last year, uh, what he says is that technology will not be a purely destructive force. New jobs will no, be created. Existing 100%. roles will be redefined and workers will have the opportunity to switch careers. The challenge particularly to this generation, say the author, is managing the transition. Income inequality is likely to grow, possibly leading to political instability, mm. Trump, and individuals who need to retrain for new careers won't be young, but middle-aged professionals. And and mm -hmm. and this this link this linked actually to the article that talk about killing jobs and only technology can save them by saying in the recent presidential election automation and robotics got a slight reprieve from the accusations that it has been a key driver in job losses in the United States during the com campaign the conversation shifted thanks largely to their then candidate yeah, Trump's masterful scapegoating of Mexico and China while calling out trade deals like NAFTA and the Trans-Pacific Partnership as clear and present threats to U.S. manufacturing. I mean, where, where do I start on that? I, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm not an expert, but if there's, if there's manufacturing in, there's people, I feel in some ways, it's almost like crying over spilled milk, right? If the job is gone, yeah. you know, as in, is it, it's just, okay, you're a factory owner. Yeah. Okay. And your, your purpose is to produce a widget. Yes. If you employ a person or you have been employing a person, paying them $30,000 a year, you know, to produce this widget, this person, you got to look after their healthcare. This person, you got to look after their holidays. This person can be sick. This person can be all these things for $30,000. And then a guy comes to you and says, hey, I've got this machine. It's going to cost you $5,000 a year. Um, and it runs 24 hours a day. So you can produce five times as many widgets as you would. 
prices are being squeezed, what are you going to do? Like, you know, Joe might be a nice guy, but at the end of the day, if you've got to keep your business open and, you know, you, it's no longer just a local game anymore. It's an international game with e-commerce mm -hmm. and Amazon and China. You're going to have to give Joe his notice and then, uh, and then Joe, Joe will have to make it. So it's not, so that's just the way I see it. I know there's definitely social elements at play, right? Okay, Joe's wife and kids. But, yeah, it's just the reality. And, and also you got the epit... Uh, so what, are, so what, are, what would you say then are, are some of the opportunities in the world aerobics, the world in these new areas um, of development, which which will be in demand because you've got to build the robot, you've got to build all these technology stuff, you've got to put it together. Um, mm. But yeah. but then, I think after you put them together and create them, they're going to start creating themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So the idea is to kind of focus on more um, hum like, uh, human tasks, I suppose you can say that. So things which things like art, for instance, are a lot less able to be done. Art, music, maybe music to an extent. Did you say, did you say art? Art. Art, yeah. Drawing and stuff like that, yes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or filmmaking, music production, all these things which which are more human have a lot more human elements, which for the most part we want to do anyway or want to be involved in. But because we're trying to, maybe a lot of people are trying to make a living, they do all these kind of more computerized things, which computers are just better at. So if the task is dull, if the task is monotonous, chances are it's going to be gone. Because A, people don't want to do it in the first place. B, computers can do it better. But like drawing, making a movie, making a song, these things are built to emotions, looking after a baby, wow. um, creating a new virtual reality universe. These are things computers can't do, right? So those are where the jobs are going to go. Or even programming computers, right? To say, okay, do this. After a while, like you said, they can program themselves. But um, I saw a movie called Ready Player One, which came out. I don't know if you saw it. Um, mm. Yeah, Matrix. Um, or we could be already in Matrix. But um, the movie Ready Player One, it's about this thing called Second, Second Life, essentially, where people are living most of their time in a virtual reality. Yes, and yes. that's... Yes. Doing it, but that creates massive amounts of opportunity, like huge amounts of jobs, huge amounts of value add in that entertainment space, right? But, and still the same thing, providing value, getting a return, and then using the value received in return to live your life. This is the same thing, but it's a different format. Okay, that, 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 that's, that's very powerful. I mean, as, as um, I think MGA a while ago just said that something about the, the, the matrix is the whole the whole matrix element, but but what I also said earlier is that persons will now have to look for things which they are passionate about, isn't it? Creating yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned yeah. the artistic, and and it's so funny because I just contacted someone who is a, a mutual friend on Facebook, um, a guy named Mark Renaissance, and I'm going to have him sometime maybe this Saturday to talk about his passion for drawing. And he I just saw an exhibition which he has. Now, which computer can take over that 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 piece of emotion which is within someone? Yeah, I, I, I think people are trying to create computers who can do that, but it's gonna be very difficult, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Eventually they might figure it out, but as of now, it's still a long way off to, to get computers to do these things. Um, but yeah, I think that's where people are going to be going a lot more towards. So people are going to want that more kind of individualized um, connection or emotion, emotional uh, um, connection there. So uh, I was thinking about this the other day, actually. It's almost like a, there's the passion, almost like a Venn diagram. Right? There's the passion aspect. There is your skill and talent aspect. And then there's the profit yeah. aspect, right? So as in what people because people are saying, what should they do? They should maybe try and focus in the middle there where their passion yes. meets their talent, meets, their, meets the profitability. Because if, if the all three aren't aligned, then it's going to be a bit of a struggle. Because you could be passionate about football, but you have zero skill. Um, exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. You could be, uh, you could have, uh, or um, what's it called? You could make a lot of money 
being a computer programmer, but you have no passion for it or the skill at it. So yeah, yeah. So for like what what, what people that, call me, yeah, like they're in a dead end job, but at the same time, that dead end job actually pays the bills. Very successful, but they're yeah. not passionate about it. If anything, so they're never or not never. There is a very 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 there's a limited chance of them being able to be very successful at it because there's somebody mm -hmm. else who's going to be successful at it or somebody else is going to be passionate about it. Um, and what, because of that reason, maybe work to develop a talent into a skill and then it will be a lot easier for them to do because there's no kind of barriers to moving forward. And then that person is going to kick that other person's ass every day. So. So, so in real terms, in real terms then, uh, I think what is really happening then somewhat is uh, a realignment of where we're at. It is like you're trying, to, it, it's realigning to where the world is now, isn't it? Mm, That's yeah. what is happening. It, exactly. It's a realignment, but then at the end of the day, I keep saying at the end of the day, it's a realignment, but it's during the transition stage is often painful, right? Changing, it's like if you're trying to change anything there's always this period of discomfort um mm. and i say discomfort lightly for people that discomfort is going to be could be extremely painful like losing a job and losing a house that's that's painful but um it's just part of the realignment process or part of the, the change process which um which is inevitable uh, we just it's that it's just so at the forefront of everything right right now that's why that's why it's seeming, seeming so painful. But in 50 years' time, in 100 years' time, it's not going to be as much of a discussion because things would have changed so much and people have adjusted, right? Um, most people have worked in the tech industry. And then something else, more than likely, will take over in a way and it's yeah, going to be some, a new challenge. Yeah, something else will take over. It always has. Like, you know, the idea of writing in books... You know, a thousand years ago, not that many people writing in books, you know, it's just, but often we're just too close to it to see how, you know, over the long term, it's going to be okay. <laughs> That's how I think about it. And, and also with the McKinsey report, what it, what it said was that the changes won't hit everyone equally. Only 5% no. of current occupations stand to be completely automated if today's cutting edge no. technology is widely adopted. But it said something here, and this is what it says, very powerful. It says, as an example, it examines the effect of personal computers in the USA since 1980, finding that the invention of computers led to the creation of 18.5 million new jobs. Mm. You know, so yeah. therefore, one would think that the computer would have actually taken away jobs, but it actually created more jobs, even when accounting for jobs lost. And the same yeah. might not be true of industrial robots, you know, so just destroy jobs overall. But then it could be another creative, creative, creative field of jobs at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I don't think it's necessarily doom and gloom at all. Y yes. I think our natural inclination is to focus on the negative. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of positive. There's a lot of positives coming out of this, and a lot of positives that will come out of this. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you just look at the entertainment sector alone, back in the day, if you wanted to be a musician and make that your career, you needed to be signed up to one of the very few music labels, and they would have to, and they would control the distribution. They would control everything. Whereas now, so many people are, you know, can have a career and actually live as a musician um, because a lot of it has been democratized, right? You can just go on YouTube, get a following going, and then, yes. you know, so that's created a new job there. That's created a new job there. Um, whereas, yeah, people want to be farmers. Yes, they're still farmers. You know, they want to hang out with cows. They can still do that, but just with technology as well. But what about, what, but what about this concept? What about this concept? Um, as well, hi, Magistry. What about this concept whereby there's also the saying that because of the time that we're in, whereby the nine to five is being kicked out the door to a certain extent, whereby there's no sort of job security anymore. 
People yeah. are saying, fire your boss. People are saying, get out of that dead end job. It seems like everybody's somewhat, depending on who you're listening to, we'll be saying everybody needs to be their own boss. I don't know if everybody needs to be their own boss um, because people, have, people, I think people are wired differently. Like some people have the ability to take on that, that risk, right? And deal with it yes. and without you know, going crazy. Whereas other people don't have that as well. So yes, if you can be mm. your own boss, great. You can reap a lot of the upsides, but then you have to deal with the downsides as well, right? Um, if you look at businesses which succeed, I don't know, maybe one out of 10 succeed for every that started, or two out of 10. Um, yes. So, and companies need people to work in companies, right? Yes. So if everybody's their own boss, who's going to be working in the companies, right? And there's nothing... Well, I, I, I tend to always say that sometimes when I, because I've been involved in network marketing and uh, sometimes okay. one of the favorite saying is, fire your own boss and things like that. And I always say that if everybody's going to be their own boss, who is going to be the person who's actually going to do some work um, in the yeah. sense of you know, keeping the organization going, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think there's, it takes loads of different people around like, to, do, to do work. So um, if you look at maybe Microsoft, Steve Jobs, one of the key, I say Steve, sorry, um, Bill Gates, one, the, the key guy there. Um, yeah. But then there's other guys like uh, I think Steve, Steve Barmer, who was CEO for that for a while. <laughs> if he had fired his boss, which was which was Bill Gates, I, I pretty much doubt he'd be worth you know north of three or four billion dollars today. So <laughs> that's from being in a job. So I don't think that's a saying everybody fire boss. I think that's a bit extreme. <laughs> yeah. Wow! 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 Well, listen. Well, listen. This this was very good. I mean. Um, it's sort of shifting away from the whole discussion right. on politics and all those sort of things, really. But looking at yeah, some that of... I... <laughs> what's that? I said that's that's your field. My, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not very much. Well, but, but, but every everything everything revolves around politics. I mean, the HMRC and uh, the job factors. They say um, in America, they say now that with the advent of Trump, it has never been so good for black people, whereby the rate of unemployment for black persons has decreased. In the UK, they are saying, even though there's a Brexit is coming, but somewhat they are saying that the rate of employment has actually been going down at the same time. The, the doom and groom, so not doom and groom, the, the doom and gloom, which they said was yeah. going to happen, actually has not happened as yet. And it seems like it's not going to happen. So so I, I think it's it's, you know what? As, as someone said here, um, M.J. Brown says, Napoleon Hill mentioned in his book, Think and Grow Rich, that there has always been a failure before success. And if you will watch the Napoleon Hill, if you watch, if you will read the book, and uh, there's a point whereby this guy was digging and digging and digging and digging for gold or stone, he dig and he dug and he dug, until the point he gave up. And then somebody just came and bought the property or whatever like that and just dug for two minutes and he claimed everything because it was at that moment. So what sometimes can be deemed as a failure is only a failure when one actually give up because the, the process continues as much as possible. And as MJ Brown said, the matrix could be a look into a future following AI. Yeah, I think on the, on the Napoleon Hill point though, I think uh, people need to be I need to be a bit, I don't know, whether careful about that because yes, you know, you fail and then you succeed, you fail and then you succeed. But at the same time, there is the other metaphor of a fly, you know, banging his head against the window, right? Yes, the fly is failing, but the fly is, if that fly doesn't move around, <laughs> that fly is going to bang his head against the window until it dies. So um, you got to know, the only thing is you got to know which one you're doing. Are you banging your head against the window or are you still searching for gold which might be like two inches away? Uh, who knows? That, that, that's a good point. There's a, there's a former prime minister in Jamaica and in a cartoon they said, I can see light at the end of the tunnel. But guess what it was? <laughs> what was it? An oncoming train. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So, you know, so well, well, when one sees the light at the end of the tunnel, it could be an oncoming train as well, you know? Yeah. As well. But, but nice. I, I want... Huh? Yeah. Sorry? I said these things are nice, but uh, in reality, they may not be as 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 um, what they seem. Yeah. So, do, do, you, do you consider yourself then a, a a practical person amidst everything else, being real and being practical at the same time? I mean, I would like to think so, but I know that's not that's not true because <laughs> to actually re really be so requires a lot of just a lot of experience, knowledge, etc., which I, I, which I'm only working on. Um, but yeah, being realistic is, is incredibly difficult to do. We, uh, I mean, I would wave on the optimistic to the pessimistic, but to be truly realistic is to see really clearly, and that's hard. We, we, we had Carol, we had Sandra Glenn came earlier, and she was talking about the, the advent of what we're going to talk about regarding knife crime and the youths and all those mm. sort of things. Now, if I ask this question then, like with young people now, young people today, um, the, the, somewhat the young people today or the millennials sometimes they feel a bit slightly displaced, like they got a, a hard ride whereby the, the baby boomers and those in the past were able to get um, these uplift in a sense of financial health. Uh, you're shaking your head. Go on. Yeah, I mean, I don't... It depends on how you want to look at it, right? Yeah. It, it, it's all, it all depends on how you look at it. So, who, it's just a case of taking advantage of what, so you can take advantage of the change or you can complain about the change. That's yes. how I see it. Maybe I'm not being empathetic or sympathetic, right? Um, there are hundreds of thousands of millennials who are taking advantage of the change. Yes. And, you know, paying out their parents' mortgages for them. Uh, because just by taking advantage of the change of the internet, they're able to generate, you know, in one or two years as much as their parents would have generated in two or three lifetimes, you know, yes. using, yes. The, using the old model. So the problem is <laughs> the younger guys who are unfortunately still listening to their parents and, and doing what their parents did in a world which has changed of course you're going to have pain. <laughs> like, of course it's going to be difficult for you. And then you complain, right? Whereas people who don't listen to their parents and have said, okay, hey, the world's actually changed here. And I know, how do I know? Because I can see the results. I can see what's around me. <laughs> and these are the people who, I mean, I'm, I know it's hyperbole, but like the Max, Mark Zuckerbergs of the world. Um, the guy who did Snapchat, one of the youngest ever billionaires, like the rate from zero to billionaire is phenomenal but these are the mm. extremes there's so many others who are just making hundreds of thousands from some kind of consulting service because they're not dealing one-to-one -one like the parents did they're dealing one right. to ten one to hundred one to hundred right that's it that's taking advantage so the person complaining i'm like come on what's complaining gonna do nothing <laughs> so so uh, so what i get from me is the whole aspect is strategizing as much as possible, being very strategic at this moment. Yeah, or just not even that. It's just like, as opposed to being the victim, think, okay, right, what can I actually do to solve this? That's it. Like, so, 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 the, so it is acquiring a, a, a victim mentality then, an overcoming mentality. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is, is that too, is that too positive? Is, is that too positive? Is that a bit too airy-fairy? No, I don't think that they're very, very. It's just yeah. a case of uh, trying to s sort your life out. You know, complaining is not going to yes. help anything. Like, yes, you know, asking the government is not going to help anything. Like, yes, yes. We all have twenty-four hours a day, right? You all have a brain, unless your brain is not working as well. Then I can understand, and yes. you need some further assistance. But if you've got a functioning brain, and you have twenty-four hours in a day. What are you going to complain about? Right, right. So, so uh, you're not a hard man. You're just being practical, isn't it? I, I it's not a matter of being hard. I, oh, I just see it as, is it beneficial or not beneficial? Mm. That's how I view it. Those two lenses. Yeah. If it's yeah. beneficial, do it. If it's not beneficial, don't. 
Yes. I, I, I think I think I think discussions and conversations like these are very important, especially um, with with young people. Not just young people, because when we say young people these days, we've got to qualify because a young person could be an elder person, as you mentioned, being to the fact of yeah. where their state of mind is, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Like um, you know, like a a young you can have an an old person who's you know fifty, but they their mind or their growth the mind stopped at you know thirty years ago. So yes. they 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 they're ancient. Or you can have a person who's fifty, but is still keeping up every single day. What's the changes that happen? So he's even younger than you know a twenty-year-old who's still not you know <laughs> who's still not realizing what's going on and still just following parental advice, which right. might be might be archaic. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, well, well. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, listen. I want to thank you, man. Thank you for for coming on. Um, um, no bro, no you. bro. Happy, happy to be on and, uh, <laughs> and have these discussions. And, and well, actually, talk. actually, I, I think you, the, some of the you see, you see, one of the things, um, Jerry. What I believe very much. I believe this very strongly. I believe that in every one of us, every single person, every human being, we've got a certain gem. We've got certain qualities. Certain individual streak that is there for others you know and uh and you know when i met you uh, uh you said you, you haven't done these things and i said it'd be good to have this conversation with you because i i i, I saw something in yourself and uh and i'd love for you to come on some other time and talk about some other issues and yes politics we, we're going to talk politics we got everybody no, talk you politics you can school me on politics Every yeah huh? I say you can school me on politics, sure, no problem. Yeah, well, I, I won't school you. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. The, the, the simple person, so-called simple person, who say they don't like politics, you have a chat with them, and they'll talk about, oh, there's no jobs. Oh, there's this this, this um, sleeping policeman which wrecks their car. There's this bloody government or whatever. Or is it the bloody Tories, as they normally say, you know? Everybody has some sort of pet peeve about politicians. If I dare say Trump, chances are everybody will come alive and rip me apart. If I dare say, kudos to Trump, as I said recently, kudos to Trump. Even persons who don't like politics will jump into frame. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, a... and I think it is, I think it is best sometimes. It is best sometimes when you engage with someone who is not a quote unquote politician, but but right. have engaged yeah. with someone who uh, is a uh, Real, I mean, everybody's real unless they're yeah. alien or they're iRobot, like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think mean, there's, there's definitely benefits to that because you get to see things from new perspectives and get new ideas and then challenge yeah. some of the beliefs that you have, which might maybe be right, be right or wrong. Um, but yeah, yeah. sure, happy to, happy, to, happy to come in another time. No, no, that, 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 is, that is powerful. And... Um, and and what what I what I love to do is um, to have this sort of discussion with you and others at some other time, you know, in 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 these sort of you know discussion. But, but what would you say is your, your last word then, um, uh, Jerry? In the last, sort of well, school. it's going to be pretty ph <laughs> philosophical. Um, on the whole, jobs thing and education thing, I feel the onus is on the individual to take advantage of whatever is out there and try to make the best of it, right? Things yes. are changing, change with it. If you don't... So yeah, on the last word, I would just say as cheesy and corny as it sounds, it's uh, down to pretty evolution, right? Evolve or die. That's it. Right, right, right. Well, well ladies and gentlemen, um, you've heard um, Mr. Garvey. I said Garvey all the while, Mr. Matthews. <laughs> That's the word, yeah. Jerry Garvey was a lawyer, you know, and stuff like that. But um, Mr. Matthews, um, the, the whole topic about um, displacement of jobs by automation, and as you recognize the article which I mentioned earlier, that said automation threatened eight, 800 million jobs, but technology could still save us. And the, the second article which I reflected on, was simply saying that 
uh, and this is what it says, ladies and gentlemen, technology is killing jobs and only technology can save them. But the key word, what Jerry said, and the last word, which I'll say is this, and we agree, evolve or die. Did I say die or you said die? What did you say? <laughs> That evolve and live. What do you say? Evolve, evolve and live. live. Evolve, evolve and live. live. Yeah. Don't evolve, then die. <laughs> That's the way you know? to crumble. <laughs> you know. So, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, so, Jerry, listen. I want to thank you so much for for coming on, and um, no problem. And we will we will catch this up again. And thank you for your time as much as possible, sir. Sure, no problem at all, sir. Something. Okay. Enjoy My the rest of the evening. Yes. Thank Bye -bye. you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I just had uh, Mr. Jerry um, Matthews. I got the name right. And we were just talking about the whole issue regarding um, jobs and is technolo technology killing jobs. And, uh, and I want to just say, I want to thank you so much for joining. Um, tomorrow night, I'll be having Sandra Glenn. She came on earlier where we've been talking about issues like some of the ways how communities or different organizations are doing things to somewhat thwart the whole thing of knife crime, violence between young people. Um, a lot of times it is seemed like the focus is on London, but also the focus is on different other areas of the UK. So we're gonna focus on Luton tomorrow night, but also while talking about Luton on a Thursday night, we're gonna be talking about has the, the black community in the UK regressed? Uh, Sandra has some ideas. She's been in the UK for years. Our parents came over and as well. And uh, we'll say within the Windrush era. And so she has some sort of insight and it's good to hear other persons, other views. And I'm just being that platform. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to like, subscribe, share this video as much as possible. And, and as well, let me hear your views in regarding to the discussion that we had tonight. Thanks again to Mr. Jerry Matthews for joining us. Thank you for Sandra Glenn for coming on as well very briefly. And as well, like, subscribe to the Silburn TV, the Silburn Show, um, Instagram, YouTube as well. And thank you for everybody who joined tonight. And have a good night and uh, all the best. Silburn, and I'm out. Instagram land. Thank you so much for joining. I just pray, wish it up. All the best. Keep peace. All the best. Thank you. Okay. And for those coming on late, um, thank you for joining. Um, see you around on the other side. Nadine, see you on the replay. Thank you very much. Bye bye.